my um, co-workers, so mm -hmm. to speak. It's a Caucasian man, um, but he's very in tune with the African American community. And so I'm telling him about, you know, like an all uh, teacher training of color um, training that I wanted to do. So he kind of got offended. He, he was like, well, you know, that's being separate. You know, we're separating. We want to bring people together and we don't want to separate people. And I said, well, you know, how many teacher trainings have you been to that have been all white people? And it got quiet. Because that's the same thing and I said so, about white spaces. Exactly. And so my thing is, and he was like, but I don't understand. And he was offended. And, I, and what I said to him was, your white privilege is what has you to believe that you are not allowed to be excluded from something. But so, they can exclude. Right. But, so, but they act like 50 years ago, we couldn't drink off the same water fountain. But here's the thing. If I am, but think about it. Think that's now. Let's take us out of it. Let's take our emotions and all that out of it, right? Not saying I, I'm talking about the stuff that was done to us in general. Mm -hmm. And let's look at it from a. If you go to work every day, right, and you show up for work late every day, and you just got this privilege that your boss don't say nothing. Other people show up, they stop and well, you, we gonna get written up this day, third, and you show up. I I I call it by y'all. I didn't know nobody's business before this, okay? So let me just say that I wasn't trying to low-key call nobody out. Go ahead. So let's say you, you know, you consistently show up to work one day and all of a sudden somebody comes to you and they say, Well, you privileged because you get to come to work late every day and don't nobody do nothing to you. You don't suffer no consequences. And I show up. And I get, I almost get fired because I'm always late, but you get to come in with no problem. What are, your, your response is going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to defend <laughs> yeah. that privilege. Yeah. You're going to defend. So we can't really expect, for the most part, right. white people to be like, oh, oh you're right. right. Let me just be fair. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's be real. Right. Let's yeah. be real. It's going to, because it's going to take so a level. used to. It takes a level of giving something up. In any growth situation, any right. and that and this is on a personal level, holistic level, right. it's like any any growth, it takes you giving something up in order to gain something, right? right? Mm -hmm. So like let's say you go shopping and you got shoes in your closet, you got to get rid of some shoes in order to buy some new shoes. That's so, how I feel about money. You got you got to give some money out to get some <laughs> money and energy, baby. Exactly, frequently, honey. Yes, but but my point is, if people don't want to give. Why would I want to be uncomfortable? If I didn't. But but is it you really? But what I'm saying is, but is it really making you uncomfortable because yeah. you can't come to where I'm Yes, at? because they don't know yes. what. Yes, because How dare you tell me I can't come? Yes, because they're their privilege that they've had for so long, and then they don't know what we're talking about. I have That's been. Another. I have been excluded from the, nothing. But this is the thing. You're worried about. They that. know what they talk about right. when That's they when we're they when it's just them and their so they, spaces. So they can't imagine. our communities to love on each other and, and and do the work but we've never been given that opportunity and every time we have tried or got a glimpse of it they came along and burnt it the hell down that's why you have to take it or they have to infiltrate it they have to find a way to make themselves be included they have to find a way to to get some type of i i have to see what's going on and is it because we are also in a space where I feel like with you, you're, you're, you're into yoga, you have your crystals on. We're also into a space where we are like love, like love is the answer. Like that's for me, I, I'm a lover, I'm a Pisces, I love everyone. So, and that's what I battle with. Um, today, this is going to sound bad. Today, I, I picked up a lady in my car and she told me she had MS and I automatically, I felt it in my spirit. It said, to, I asked her, I said, do you believe that you can self heal? I said, do you believe? Well, she said, well, this, 
I do, but this is an incurable disease. That's not what I'm asking you. Do you believe in the power of, of, of self-healing? And I started telling her about Joe Dispenza, his uh, meditation. I started telling her about Dr. Sebi. I, I looked up, and then don't you know something in the back of my head said, why are you telling this white lady all this information? And then I had to hit myself <laughs> and say, that's not nice. That's not yeah, nice. Yeah, we gotta be loving people. We and have think- to. Even though we want these safe places for ourselves to heal because we deserve that, it's like it's still, for me, it's still a battle because I'm still, I'm B1 all the way, no doubt. But I'm also on another level as as your friend says, I want to bring all of us Mm -hmm. together. So how do we like... Well, you gotta you gotta heal you first, and then like the, and the analogy I gave him was, let's say you have a married couple, right? You have we let's white people, the husband and black people, like however you want to put it. But let's say you have a married couple, and you're you having issues in your marriage, right? And so you're going to marriage counseling. At some point, that marriage counselor is going to recommend individual counseling, and so okay. sacred healing spaces is individual counseling. Uh, aside that marriage count you understand what i'm saying yeah and so you have we have to heal ourselves first and then we can unite and it has and it doesn't take it see black people healing themselves takes nothing away from anybody else for some reason they think when you say that Mm -hmm. that that means that you want want to take something from someone well if i benefit but if i benefit from your pain why would I not be offended? If I benefit mm-hmm. from your struggle, mm-hmm. why would I want you to heal? Mm-hmm. I want you to stay in that place because it benefits mm-hmm. me. So that that's, and that's why you gotta kinda, you have to take, it's, it's nothing, I read something earlier. If you, they won't give you a seat at the table, you make a table of your own specifically for what you need and for what you want. And that's what Sacred Healing Spaces is. So. Some people did not like the fact that we did it for women of color only because it's it's an organization by Avanzar and Avanzar is for women, period. Avanzar is for um, sex trafficking, domestic violence, sexual assault, and um, I believe there's one other thing. So if y'all are listening to Avanzar, I don't, I, I don't work for y'all, but so I, I ain't mean to <laughs> So with that being said, but it's one of those things where it's like making my table creating my space. You're not gonna let me have my space. So I have to carve out my own space. And so no one's gonna let me have my healing. I have to take my healing. And I have to take ownership of that. And taking ownership of your healing is also taking ownership of your actions. So yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't wanna preach no more. No, <laughs> but, that, but that's what it is. That's what healing looks like. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like perfection. It doesn't look like sounding white or looking white or doing white people things. What it looks like is, okay, I, I'm showing up like this. I don't like the way I'm showing up like this. This needs to change. Right. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? What do I do about my anxiety? Mm-hmm. What do I do about my stress? Mm-hmm. What do I do? With, you know what I'm saying? Because And then when we show up better for ourselves, we show up better for our children, our men, our you know, our, our family, our every yeah. community, mm-hmm. everything. And so you have to, it has to be personal first, and then it can be holistic. Um, one thing I've been saying lately is, it's okay. You're unlearning 40 years. Oh, <laughs> uh, cause I, I'm, I'm the person that beats up on myself. Mm-hmm. Michelle, you didn't meditate today. And now look at you, or you haven't meditated in a week. Now look at you. Now you're sad again. Da-da-da-da. And I now recently, over these 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 past couple of weeks, I've been stopping and I've been saying, I literally have to talk to myself. Like you know what? It's okay, baby. Like I gotta talk you gotta be to kind myself. To yourself. Yes, and that's another thing I say after meditation today. I'm going to be start with feeling compassionate towards myself. Mm-hmm. That's the only way mm-hmm. I can be compassionate with other people. I can't give, and we say that all the time. I can't give you what I don't have. Yeah. yeah. If you don't have it, you can't pour it out. Right. How am I going to pour and fill you up and love on you if I can't? If I don't have it to love on myself? And so it's not a selfish thing, and it goes deeper than getting your hair done and nails done, taking yes. some baths and stuff like yes. that. All that's good. I'm not saying that, you know, we all want to be fresh. No, we need that. But, but, but meditation, 
journaling, self-inquiry, and really being accountable for your shit. Like, okay, I do this. Right. Whoa. Because healing is not, it ain't, I'm healing. Right. It is not, definitely, it is not sunshine and fucking, <laughs> you love like, like, like fucking love rain. You. And none of that shit. You know I right? just realized I'm in a bathtub. I always come to these awakenings. I was just sitting here because my past little thing that I just went through. I said, you know what? Yeah, that person was a little bit wrong. But then I had to check myself. I said, you know, your soulmates is never really about them. It's always really about you. Whatever happens is really about you. You, them trying to show you without even knowing that they that's what they role was. But I said, see, you only been in two real relationships. You don't know how to treat a man. How about that? <laughs>